started in 2020. We were, the library was closed to how the space was traditionally used. We weren't checking out print books. And we had art classes, we had chorus classes, we had film production. And it started with a conversation with students and it was the mental health aspect from being in quarantine for so long. And other students had used sensory centers in hospital settings, uh, more clinical settings, but not in a school setting. And the more that they talked about it, we had conversations of what kind of materials we could bring into the library to make it more of a place where students could relax outside of a traditional classroom. Had a few student leaders and then others joined in and they took on different pieces of the project. We have um, Tashani is a technology student right now and she's using recyclable plastics and building a giant storm cloud that'll be computer programmed with LED lights and sound. Cody is, this is part of her senior capstone pick project. So she was my academic aide for two years and spent a lot of time in the library and so she was really on the forefront of the planning. Then we did a collaboration with the WAVE classroom and we built a whole, uh, they ended up researching a lot of materials that like, they'd like to see in it and it was based on individual interests puzzles and um, we had one student that liked everything that was going into it but they said I'm not really interested in that I like to move I like to exercise so that's why we have the balance boards behind me uh, so we're trying to get make it equitable access for everyone but then different interests uh, some students enjoy the puzzle the community coloring table it's whatever they're interested in we have actually we have um, a number of materials large end materials uh, they're chairs, they're called vibroacoustics, and they're Bluetooth enabled. And if you can imagine how people that do not have the sense of hearing, how they listen to music through vibrations, those are coming. Uh, we have giant light bright and blue light textured walls coming. We have some really exciting materials coming this month. Okay. We started, um, Ms. Edwards needed help like arranging shelves over here, so that's when we started working over here. Move books, and then we assembled on assembled shelves. Yeah, and, and then, then we helped construct this awesome area. Yeah. Oh, there's many things. And every day there's like basically new things. I love the kinetic sand. That's my favorite part of it. I agree experience. with Shane. Yeah. I agree with Shane, but I prefer the chairs. I kind of like chairs, the puffs that are really nice. Very really comfortable you know. if you have a tough day, just lay down there. Just spend some time there, and um, it's a pretty awesome place. It's just my favorite to be honest. You can just relax there in time. It's a good place for kids to just go whenever they want. Like slowly and slowly, it started to get more and more popular. I mean, like people are going and like coming back. I guess. So. Um, it's really nice in here. I think the vibe is actually awesome. I would love to come in here more. If my teachers would let me leave class because I was stressed, I would be in here all the time. Yeah, just bridging off what you were saying, I feel like this space could be utilized a lot more just because when you're really stressed out over a class or over a test, maybe you're just having a bad day. I don't know, I feel pretty relaxed in this b I think chair, the guidance you know? office could make use of this. I Seriously. I definitely like the lights up there. I also yeah. like... The lighting is cool. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. In the beginning, my my experience when I began to research with the student was that sensory centers uh, were used by a lot of students and adults that have spectrum autism spectrum disorder, and it's a way that you can uh, refocus your body. So you're moving on the balance beam, or you're using some of the tactile, the uh, fine motor skills type thing, and it's allowed. It allows students and adults to refocus and ultimately to learn. Um, so what was happening was it began with a collaboration with the WAVE and then the next students got involved because some of the items like the bubble towers and things they can connect with their switches so they're able to engage more outside of their classroom. Uh, they also come down, they use um, talking boards to communicate because some of the students they're not completely nonverbal but they do use talking boards to communicate and they've entered each of the activities in the sensory space into the talking board so they can choose how they'd like to participate in the space. And then it's ultimately we envision in the maker space that the space will be able to be scheduled by individual teachers. We've had uh, many AP students come down to the space before testing. Uh, anytime there's something stressful in your life, you could just be having an off day. Uh, the guidance counselors send students down every day. 
So if there's just a time that you're not ready to be in your class for whatever's going on, um, you can come down to the space, take the time that's needed. We have the lights low, as you can see. Um, we have students that have cu cu um, concussions that use the space, so gym teachers send guidance, and then a lot of um, the space is open and it's used by the whole school community now. And, and again, it's just a space to come down, sit in a bean bag if you have some time, or you have the chairs that are they're different. They're um, you know they're different from the rigid classroom seating, and sometimes that's what you need to kind of redirect how your day is going. <laughs> Thank you.